from the Digital Media Center on the campus of Southern Oregon University in Ashland, Oregon. This is Ramping Up Your English, an educational program for intermediate level English language learners. Here's your host for Ramping Up Your English, John Letts. Welcome to Ramping Up Your English. Ramping Up Your English is for English language learners from all language backgrounds who have already begun the process of learning English as their second language. It's a program for people of all ages. If you're seeking greater English proficiency, this program is designed to help you reach that goal. Ramping Up Your English is a support program for English learners who have already passed the beginning stages of learning English. We take a content-based approach to helping you reach higher English proficiency. We use English to teach English. The theme of our first unit is Trains and Railroads. This is Episode 28, Segment 1. In our last episode, we reached New Mexico aboard Amtrak's Southwest Chief. We also learned about the importance of conversation groups. Today, we finish that journey to Los Angeles, and we visit a railroad museum that will give us a lot to talk about. That makes for a pretty full show. Let's get started by catching the Southwest Chief on part four of its journey to the West Coast. This is New Mexico between Lamy and Albuquerque. Northern New Mexico from the Southwest Chief. New Mexico claims to be the land of enchantment. I tend to agree. For me, it's certainly an intriguing place. The landscape here speaks for itself and speaks better than any words in any language. This land sends my mind into wild imagination. But it's not just the physical presence. New Mexico seems to be haunted by the spiritual presence of those who lived here and have never gone. The ancient ones who lived here for centuries and were then forced to leave. The old ones who lived here for centuries as well, some of them building pueblos a thousand years old. There's a heavy Spanish presence here from explorers like Coronado, priests and brothers from religious orders, yes, and soldiers who took away the peace from the indigenous people. They all seem to linger in these crags, these mountains, the dry arroyos, even the clouds in the sky. Teamsters on the Santa Fe Trail, ranchers and railroads fighting range wars, but also peaceful ones who learn to flourish with very little. Those who walk in peace, in harmony with nature. The poet, the flautist, the photographer, willingly giving themselves to this land. And the railroad, first the Santa Fe, then Amtrak, then the mergers. Now these rails have become part of this land too, no less than the rocks and the scrubby trees or the dust devils. There's life here even where there's no water, but oh how precious the water. There just seems to be no place like this. Tiny adobe houses with their beehive-shaped ovens outside. Parts of the Southwest Chief's route can take you back in time to the wild west of the movies. But not Albuquerque, New Mexico's largest city. Yep. Quite a station. At this stop, I had time to get off and walk around a little bit on the platform. I was in time to see one of our three engines uncouple and move away. I suppose two engines would be enough to take us the rest of the way to Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. 
Here we tanked up on diesel fuel. I don't think I would want to pay the bill for this tank up. This stop is memorable because local Native Americans sell items here, some of them made locally. I bought Liz her Christmas present here, then hurried to get back on the train before it departed. Soon we were back on the rails amidst this geographic wonderland. One writer reflected that it looked as if God had stored here all the mountains, canyons, and other landforms that were left over from the creation of the earth. I just know that I never got tired of seeing them, and I was grateful for the daylight to appreciate these wonders. It made a magical backdrop for enjoying dinner. Night came, as it must, and this enchanting day closed with this brooding scene. Morning found us in this sprawling rail yard where the Burlington Northern Santa Fe assembled piggyback cars for transport to the east. I like this whole idea of keeping these trucks off the road until their trailers arrive for local or regional delivery. This is known as intermodal transport. Here are the giant devices for lifting the trailers up on the train cars. This huge facility seemed to go on forever. We finally found ourselves in Los Angeles, right along the river. Now we saw the Los Angeles skyline. Onboard crew, track 12, right side. Ladies and gentlemen, we are now arriving at Los Angeles Union Station. Please check around your seat for all your personal items. Red caps will be on the platform waiting for you. Ooh, that's a nice one. Here we were at Los Angeles Union Station, the end of the line for the Southwest Chief. From here, trains leave for New Orleans on the Sunset Limited. It's also the starting point for the northbound Coast Starlight. That's a train we would board for our trip back to Oregon. When you see such incredible beauty like this, you want to share it with others. Well, if Amtrak can't keep this train alive, it would be a huge loss for everyone. An organization that is fighting to keep this train alive is the National Association of Railroad Passengers. If you want to help save the Southwest Chief, visit them at www.narprail.org to see how you can help. I hope you enjoyed part four of Amtrak's Southwest Chief. For Ramping Up Your English, I'm John Letts. Welcome back to Ramping Up Your English, a support program for intermediate level English learners. If you're striving to improve your English, you're in the right place. The Santa Fe Railroad's passenger trains, including the Super Chief, gave rail travelers yet another option to reach the West Coast from the great rail hub of Chicago. You can have a lot of fun learning about trains and railroads at the California State Railroad Museum in Sacramento, California, it's one of the best railroad museums in the world, and we'll give you a peek at some of its treasures later in this episode. That's all for segment one of episode 28. We'll be back with segment two right after this. This is a Ramping Up Your English book review. If you've taken an interest in the theme of trains and railroads, you can grow that interest with Trains Magazine. This is for the serious rail fan or just anyone who loves trains. Each issue has a main theme. 
This one about Western steam engines clearing the tracks of snow and ice. Since the featured events were for our photographers, there are incredible pictures in this special winter and holiday issue. This issue also features Union Station in Kansas City, a beautifully remodeled historic train station served by Amtrak's Southwest Chief during its nighttime run between Chicago and Los Angeles. Trains Magazine is also a good source of finding railroad museums closest to your home. If you want to know more, visit their website. I found my copy at a newsstand and I just couldn't resist buying it. This has been a Ramping Up Your English book review. I'm John Letts. Welcome back to Ramping Up Your English. This is segment two of episode 28. We're using the themes of trains and railroads in order to help you improve your English. The Southwest Chief is the second Amtrak train I ever rode back in 1984. I had one week of vacation and very little money. Amtrak had this special back then that allowed you to pay one low fare according to how many of the three zones you traveled in. As far as I could go was going east to Santa Fe, New Mexico without entering another zone and paying more. This was the first time, this trip that I'm talking about, this was actually the first time that I traveled in northern Arizona and New Mexico. And I was intrigued by the landscape. This was very different from Oregon. And being on the train allowed me to really gaze upon the landscape. I didn't have any video camera at the time. In fact, these shots were taken with an Instamatic camera shooting 110 size film. Here are some of the shots I got. This is the, this fantastic bridge over the Rio Grande River gave me a tiny taste of vertigo, just enough to thrill my, my senses. You can see the river way down there. I got to visit a, a living Pueblo, an Indian Pueblo also, or was it the Pueblo Indians I visited? Either way, it fulfilled an intrigue I'd had ever since my childhood. In Santa Fe, I visited the state capitol, as well as I saw the Cabildo of the old Spanish days. You can see the Cabildo right there. From inside the uh, adobe structure, I had to crawl around these old cave dwellings and wonder about the people who lived there before the Europeans arrived. So that was my view that you're looking at right here. This magical landscape played with my imagination, even, even as I had the real experience of being there. I did all this in a week and returned to my news reporting job in Medford. When my boss asked me about my vacation, I could only answer honestly, it was too short. So while I traveled only a short distance on the Southwest Chief, it was very much a peak experience that left me eager to take this outstanding train again, which is exactly what I did with Liz in 2013. In our last episode, we explored ways to boost our speaking proficiency by finding or forming conversation groups. Now, I've listed some resources that will help you get there on my website. Visit letscreate.org and go to the episode 27 page. You can reach my website from your home computer or from your smartphone as long as you're connected to the Internet. You can watch Ramping Up Your English on Channel 15 and other channels on the Ashland Home Network and on Channel 182 on Charter Cable in Southern Oregon. You can also see the program and download it by going to archive.org slash details slash rogue TV. There you can get the video on demand. Now if you've found and joined English conversation groups since our last episode, congratulations. The benefits will be huge as you engage in real communication using the proficiency you've gained through watching our video clips, reading about our topic, and doing the activities posted on my website. If you find you're not doing a lot of talking in that group, I recommend having patience. When the time's right, you're likely to join in and you'll find it hard to stop talking. If you haven't found a conversation group yet, keep looking and remember that a conversation group can be as small as two people. The important thing is that you're supporting each other and learning from each other, plus you're getting this crazy language on your tongue and out of your mouth. That's important. It's likely to sound clunky when you first start with many quiet gaps and a few laughs. That's all normal. That's just normal. 
you'll find that you and your partners will have more and more to say as you continue to meet, and the conversation will smooth out over time. It takes some patience, but it's worth it. Now, if you can partner with people who've been watching our program, you should have lots to say and to understand when you talk about trains and railroads. That will branch out into other areas of interest since much of what we're learning is transferable. In other words, you don't have to be a rail fan to be in the conversation group. You'll have a lot to talk about, and you'll have even more when you see the California State Railroad Museum in Sacramento. We have a tiny taste of that world-class museum when we return. This is a Ramping Up Your English book review. After American Railroad's golden age, thousands of miles of track were abandoned. Rather than see these valuable transportation corridors disappear, an organization called Rails to Trails turns them into trails for bicycling, hiking, and sometimes horseback riding. Members get to see good work that's being done by enjoying the organization's magazine. Each issue features rail trails throughout the country as well as maps that can help them enjoy them. There are always interesting features like this one on railroad trestles. If you want to receive the magazine, you must become a member. I bought my first copy from a group that supports libraries, but I soon became a member myself to support their important work. Millions of people are enjoying healthy lives by getting outside and using these trails. And if you need something to feel good about, you can always enjoy a Rails to Trails magazine. You can contact Rails to Trails at railstotrails.org. You may never get to drive a train, but you can enjoy hiking and biking where the trains used to pass. For Ramping Up Your English, I'm John Letts. Welcome back to Ramping Up Your English. Our goal is to help you elevate your level of English proficiency in a way that causes the least amount of stress. We endeavor to make English learning interesting and fun by using a thematic approach. Our first theme is trains and railroads. This is segment three of episode 28. If you'd love to see and get your hands and feet on some real trains, you can't beat the experience of visiting a railroad museum. There are many such museums across the country, but one of the best in the world is the California State Railroad Museum in Sacramento, California. Let's take a peek at some of their treasures. The California State Railroad Museum is one of the top railroad museums in the world. It's a family-friendly place to learn about the trains and railroads with an emphasis on the construction of the western end of the Transcontinental Railroad, which pretty much started at this spot. We're in Sacramento, where an engineer and four businessmen gave birth to the Central Pacific Railroad. The story that's told so well by the museum includes the surveying work in the Sierra Nevada mountains to lay out tracks in an area widely believed too mountainous for a railroad. The work of building the line included blasting through hard rock using black powder and then later nitroglycerin, which was unlawful to transport through California but part owner Leland Stanford made that possible when he was governor. The punishing, dangerous work was shunned by white workers, but was masterfully carried out by workers from China. Everything in this gallery tells the story of the building of the first railroad across America. Then when we finish with the little history lesson, we'll go into an area of the museum where you can touch and feel and even walk through some of the old railroads. The story is very well told by volunteers at the museum and beautifully illustrated by the fantastic exhibits. This first train locomotive on the West Coast is owned by Stanford University and displayed here at the museum along with numerous other locomotives and rolling stock. Lucky children from area schools get to visit the museum on their field trips. 
The western section met the eastern section at Promontory, Utah in 1869. But the story goes on, with visitors invited to explore full-size trains inside the museum. In the big exhibit hall, visitors found even more trains. Years ago, I had learned about how Southern Pacific kept California produce cold on its journey to markets in the east. Huge blocks of ice were inserted into the walls of special cars. Now I got to actually see those cars. It's not all about the past here. The planned high-speed train in California inspired this display. More comfortable, more welcoming. But in 20, 30, or 50 years, who knows what it will become? The other modes of transport will waste no time. Who knows where it will take us? It is up to us, people in the railways, to invent its future. Southern Pacific Railroad invented its future when it pioneered the cab forward design so its train crews could go through its many tunnels and snow sheds without choking on the smoke. Steam engines like this giant had safety valves so the boiler wouldn't explode from too much pressure. I learned that the safety valves were sometimes bypassed when going up steep grades with a heavy load. The Santa Fe Railroad display showed a very important part of long-distance rail travel, the dining car. During the golden age of rail travel, companies competed to turn out the best dining experience for passengers, the food prepared in kitchens like this one. Tables were set with the finest china. These dining cars were five-star restaurants on wheels, metal wheels. It went from L.A. to Chicago, down through New Mexico, came up through the corner of Colorado, through Kansas City. It took 39 hours and 45 minutes. It came through what this was called the Train of the Stars. Your movie stars wrote it, Jack Benny, Bob Hope. My favorite was this Canadian National display, a full-size sleeper car that seemed to be racing through the dark countryside. You can see the swaying of the car and hear the clickety-clack of the wheels without ever leaving the museum. Future rail fans were here with their school groups. There's a lot here to recreate the past of railroading. The famous Golden Spike and a mural commissioned by Leland Stanford, a glorious pass built onto by the Southern Pacific Railroad. In the same museum, I got to have a hands-on experience of the future. Museum goers get to be engineers of a high-speed train in the museum's simulator. I didn't have to wait long for my turn to sit down at the controls and show my stuff. I was taking all this seriously, learning how I could get this high-speed train in on time safely for all my virtual passengers. I had help learning the controls from one of the museum's many volunteers.
Once the doors were closed, I eased it out of the station. Everyone seemed interested to see how I was doing. Going fast between stations was no problem, but pulling into the station required some fancy work at the controls. See the speed up there? Wow. Oh, you can go over. I went to the shelter. I'll go back. Watch the remaining distance. Well, I didn't overshoot the station, and my instructor had a kind of a compliment. I mean, I've done that bad too. <laughs> Worse even. So. Alrighty, thank you. The California State Railroad Museum is located in Old Town, Sacramento, an area worth exploring. By now, my mind wasn't as much on the past, though, as on the future. I'm still learning to do that at least five times a time. Welcome back to Ramping Up Your English. I have good news for you. You've just earned a bonus video. Just go to letscreate.org and click on the episode 28 page. There you'll find a bonus video of, of Amtrak Southwest Chief. It features the four parts we've seen on our program, plus a bit of extra video. A little bit more footage there. At the same website, you can watch or download any of our Ramping Up Your English episodes. Go to archive.org slash details slash Rogue TV. You can watch Ramping Up Your English on Channel 15 and others on the Ashland Home Network and on Channel 182 on Charter Cable in Southern Oregon. Channel selection will vary in other areas of the country with public access TV. I want to thank my volunteer crew, my announcer Bob Ayers, RVTV, and I want to thank you, our viewers. See you next time on Ramping Up Your English. I'm John Letts. You've been watching Ramping Up Your English, a support program for intermediate level English language learners. Learn more. Visit our website at letscreate.org. You can also watch or download today's program at archive.org slash details slash rogue TV. Join us next time on RBTV Voices for Ramping Up Your English.